Hey guys, it's Amy, and I am sitting on a stool today, not standing in the exact same location in my apartment that I always do, which means that we're doing something a little bit different today on Vintage Space. Today, I am going to tell you the story of my space tattoo. So a lot of you guys have asked about this. There are pictures on Instagram and on Twitter and occasionally in a video if I move my arm a certain way, you do see a tattoo and a lot of people have been asking what it is and when it got there. Um, so I thought I would share with you guys today the story that yes, I do indeed have a space tattoo. Um, I got it a few months ago and I am so completely in love with it and obsessed with it so I thought I would talk about it today. So as you guys can see, it is in fact a Gemini Regala wing, which anybody who's been following me for any length of time should know by now that this is like my favorite technology that never came to be, uh, beyond two test tow vehicles that are currently in museums. One is in Udvar Hazy and one is in a museum in Scotland. So I've heard by people sending me pictures on Twitter. Uh, that's the one I haven't visited yet, but one of these days. So anyways, the Gemini Regala wing. This is actually uh, from a NASA drawing showing the entire landing sequence of the Gemini Regala wing. So a little bit of just background history, and I've got videos, more proper education videos about this stuff that I will put um, up in the corner right here, right now. Um, the Gemini Regala wing was NASA's attempt to do away with um, splashdown landings in the 1960s, right? Splash Downs are really quite difficult and costly. It was, you know, the simplest solution to coming back from space was just have the capsule um, fall effectively from orbit. I know it's not actually falling, but for all intents and purposes, for right now, it's falling out of orbit into the large wielding target that is the ocean. Um, much simpler design, you just need a parachute to slow it down. The problem is that then you have to collect it, and that means getting the US Navy to be on hand to actually pluck the astronaut out of the water. Um, and that was a, a huge cost. The figure that I always give, my favorite one on this, is that when Wally Shira flew his Sigma 7 flight in 1963, there were 27 naval ships on hand to recover him. A single man who was an ace pilot had 27 ships. I can't remember how many people that is, but 27 ships on hand just to pull him out of the ocean when he was done. So. That was one problem with splashdowns. The other was, of course, that, um, you know, there is the drowning issue. Um, as we saw with Gus Grissom's Liberty Bell 7 flight when the hatch detonated early and the capsule flooded with water and sank. Um, no one wanted to send astronauts into space, send them to the moon, have them come down, splash down, everything's beautiful, and then have them die by drowning. This is not exactly ideal. Also, the problem that salt water is extremely corrosive to metal, and this is one of the things that was making it so that capsules couldn't easily be reused. None of them were reused in the Apollo era. That's a separate video that I'll do properly later on. So anyways, NASA was really looking for different ways to get away from splashdowns and actually bring some pilotability into the spacecraft for landing because again, the astronauts were all pilots, why not have them land on a runway and actually you know, save the spacecraft and be able to refurbish it and reuse it and save the cost of hiring the Navy and put the astronauts' lives more in their own control. If they, you know, hit a rough spot, they have to change their landing position. It's simpler to do when you have some cross capability in a vehicle that can fly. So one of the solutions was the Gemini Regala wing. So this is basically a two lobe sail. It's a triangular design hanging um, or sort of, well, over the Gemini spacecraft, the Gemini spacecraft hanging beneath it. And it was connected by, by cables. And by manipulating, pulling the cables, um, the pilot could manipulate the center of balance of the mated Regala wing Gemini spacecraft. And by that start to affect a slow movement and actually land it theoretically like an aircraft on a runway, ideally being at Edwards Air Force Base where you have the dry lake bed as like a pretty big target. So the Gemini Regala program ran from about 1961 to 1965 and cost NASA 1.6 Five million dollars, which is about 2.1 billion dollars as adjusted for inflation. And like I said, it, it's my favorite technology that didn't get anywhere. Um, there were two test tow vehicles that were flown by three pilots, two of which ended up in the hospital, one of which, Jack Swigert, ended up leaving North American Aviation, who built the Gemini Regalo, um, and joined NASA's astronaut corps, as we know, to fly on Apollo 13. Um, it was NASA really tried to get it into the program. They, they originally, every Gemini mission was supposed to land by the paraglider. And then as there were technical problems developing it, it was okay. The first 
sort of shakedown cruise. The first manned mission will land by parachute and then paraglider from there. Okay, well, it's still delayed, so let's do the first five with parachute and then the rest by paraglider. I mean, it got to the point where there were people within NASA pushing to add an extra Gemini mission into the program just to test the paraglider in action. And another fun little bit of this story is the Parasev, or Paraglider Research Vehicle Program, that spun out of this, Milt Thompson, who was an X-15 pilot, lifting body pilot, so what many of you guys probably have heard me talk about him within reference to, um, he was fascinated by the Regalo wing and how it would work, and he really wanted to see if he could fly it and see how it would actually handle. So he conspired with Neil Armstrong to actually build a test vehicle on their own using sort of found materials. And once uh, the director at the high speed flight station, Paul Bickle, I believe it was, um, found out what they were doing, said, okay, fine, we'll give you a, a few thousand dollars to do this, just don't die. So the vehicle, the Parasev is actually in Udvar Hazy. You can go see it. It's like an open tricycle with a paraglider type sail. It's much smaller than the one over the test tow vehicle um, over top of it. And it was designed to give the astronauts a sense of how it would handle. So it was, it was a program that no one really knows about, but a lot of astronauts were actually involved in just kind of seeing how it would go because the Gemini program was, you know, the first time astronauts really got involved in kind of helping design things. So, you know, Gus Grissom was really involved in building Gemini and sort of arranging it such that it was actually called the Gus Mobile by some of the astronauts and engineers. So it made sense that he would go to Edwards and like try to fly the Parasev to understand how the paraglider lander would work. So that's the off the top of my head history. Again, I'll have links in the description of like better videos with more actual details about it. But I decided that I wanted to get a tattoo. I mean, I, I love tattoos, I should say. I've always loved tattoos. I love that you can get um, art on your body that sort of speaks to exactly who you are. And you know, everyone, you know, bad tattoos are bad tattoos, but good tattoos are like the best. Um, so I always, wanted a space tattoo, but I wanted something that was more unique to me. I didn't want to just get like a solar system or a something. Like I wanted something that was going to be a little bit more like, huh, that's different because that's more fun for me. So I actually originally wanted to do the entire landing sequence of the image that this is from. Um, and I, I inquired with a couple artists about doing it and um, turns out that I, I'm like physically too small to get the entire thing in. It was gonna be so small and detailed that it was just gonna be impossible. Um, and I tried like modifying it and it's just sort of like, this is gonna turn into a bit of a mess because my inner forearm is, or inner upper arm rather, is just not long enough to get the entire design in. Um, so I ended up meeting meeting a woman, Zoe at Warren Tattoo on uh, Sunset, who is, I'm literally giving her a shout out because she's phenomenal. I mean, look at, look at how good this is. She's amazing. Um, if you're in LA, I would highly recommend meeting with her about a design that you're after. Um, I, I took this in and I showed it to her and she, she was like, yeah, that's, that's super easy and super cute. So we decided to just go with the one um, and leave space around it, so if I ever want to add anything to it, I have that option. Um, but yeah, just a very simple design, um, very sort of vintage, it's vintage drawing, so it's very much my aesthetic. Um, and I got it here because, I, I'll leave this awkwardly rolled up, but when I'm talking on camera and doing a movement like this, you can't totally see it. So it's discreet enough that it's, it, you don't have to, it's not in your face for, you know, anyone who does, does hire me, but it is there. Um, and something that's really personal to me. And the reason I wanted to get that as a tattoo, not just because it's something that I love, but again, anyone who's followed me for any length of time knows that um, I wrote my master's thesis on the Gemini Regalo wing. This was like the first failed program at NASA that I really dug into and was like, ooh, there's so many stories from NASA history that I want to dig into and tell the humans, not just tell the academic world who already knows they exist. Um, that was the first thing that made me like fall in love with weird history. Um, so I wanted to get this tattoo to remind me and to sort of stand as like a thing for me to look at and be like, yep, there's a reason that I do like put up with all the weird things that my job entails and work the insane projects that I do and it's because it's because of this it's because I fell in love with this stupid weird paraglider spacecraft hybrid and wanted to tell that story to everybody because it's bonkers and awesome and exciting and weird and fun um, 
that that sort of was the impetus for everything that's come after it. So it made a lot of sense for me to get a tattoo that would be the Gemini Regalo and then settling on something that's just very simple, very discreet, but vintage. It was just, it felt like it was just perfect for me. So that's, that is the space tattoo. That's my Gemini Regalo tattoo. If you ever see me and want to take a look at it, I'm like very happy to show it off because it's, it's beautiful. She did such a beautiful job and I'm so, so happy with it. And people have been asking me on Instagram whether I would ever get another tattoo. Um, sorry, mom and dad. I might. Um, <laughs> I'm not. I don't have any plans. But, you know, I might down the line. We'll find out. So yeah, that's the story of my space tattoo. A lot of you guys have been asking for it, so that's that's what it is, that's what it looks like, that's the genesis, um, and I'm really, I love it. And um, yeah, I like talking about it because it's kind of awesome. So let me know in the comments if you have a space tattoo or want a space tattoo, what do you have or want to get and why? Um, yeah, space tattoos are fun. Let's talk about space tattoos. And of course, if you guys have other random things that you would like me to talk about, leave those in the comments below as well. You can follow me for daily vintage space content and daily little bits into my life on Twitter and on Instagram. I'm at AST Vintage Space, and of course, with new videos going up every single week, regular episodes of Vintage Space, and the occasional little dive into my personal life. Um, be sure to subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.